Good morning and thank you for joining us for our quarter two and H1 FY24 earnings call. The presentation and the press release have been issued to the stock exchanges and uploaded on our website. I hope everyone has been able to go through the same. Our performance this quarter has been good driven by higher sales volume in the plumbing segment. Finished goods sales volume for the quarter increased by 8% year on year to 41,529 metric tons and overall revenues grew by 3% year on year to Rs. 656 crores. The correction in PVC prices in early October did lead to some destocking and deferment of volume in September. But the prices have now stabilized with a slight uptick leading to restocking and supporting volume growth during quarter three. Improving product mix, rigorous input cost control, efficient marketing strategy and good volume growth have translated into margins rebounding to normalized levels in quarter two. I am glad to share that this was the maiden quarter of the bathware segment and we have received a very encouraging response from dealers and end customers. Let me share some highlights of our Prince, Prince bathware segment post its launch in June 2023. I am happy to share that our products have been well received in the market, gaining positive sales traction and encouraging feedback. We continue to build a robust distributor base in northern and western India with brand launches in tier 2 and tier 3 markets like Srinagar, Jaipur and Varanasi. We plan to launch bathware in eastern India by quarter 4 FY24. We have also started participating at exhibitions and events which have drawn a very good response. I am glad to share that we have already undertook our first project in Mumbai where our products have already been installed for the first phase of the project. As our tanks business scales up, we will continue to leverage our multi-location manufacturing presence to scale this segment. In the next couple of months, we would set up manufacturing in Haridwar and Chennai, taking it to five of the seven in-house locations. With these efforts, we plan to establish a strong presence in all segments, including pipes and fittings, water tanks and pathware. Just to give you an update on our Bihar facility, the implementation is going on as per our plan. The layout has been finalized and the work will start post Diwali as we commence construction at our latest integrated manufacturing facility at Begusarai in Bihar. As we grow, we are investing in building a strong front line of our team in accounts, finance, and HR to implement progressive strategies to help us achieve our long-term vision. I take this opportunity to welcome Anand and Ajay as we work together towards fortifying our industry leadership position. Anand is a qualified CA with over 20 years of experience in finance, commercial planning, and efficient management of stakeholders people, performance, risk, and opportunity. Prior to Prince, he was associated with ACC Limited for 14 years in different roles and responsibilities. In addition, I welcome Ajay Kumar, our new Chief HR Officer, who brings comprehensive experience of 23 plus years in developing and executing strategic human resource policies. He has extensive exposure to large corporates with multiple manufacturing units spread across geographies in India and overseas. On an overall basis, several strategic efforts have been undertaken 
over the past few months and we will bear the fruits from them as we progress ahead. Prince Pipes remain active, agile and growth hungry to ramp up market expansion efforts. The long term industry fundamentals remain strong. The real estate sector continues to remain buoyant, especially reporting good sales in the mid and premium category. In fact, realtors expect record sales this year and unsold inventory is at a decadal low which augurs well for all building material consumption over the next two to three years. Property developers expect home sales to post a new high at more than half a million units in the top seven Indian cities this year amid strong demand and big launches planned by many eminent large developers. Several prominent launches for residential real estate are lined up for this festive season as sales numbers are expected to touch unprecedented levels. We are closely monitoring every aspect of industry momentum and are excited about the untapped potential. With several steps in the right direction, as we focus on market penetration and expansion of Pan-India footprint, we expect continued growth in the second half of the fiscal as we move ahead with an even greater commitment to transform and strengthen India's water infrastructure. Thank you for your time and mind share. I will now hand it over to Anand to take you through the key financial highlights. Thank you, Parag Bhai, for the warm welcome and good morning, friends. I will be taking you through the quarterly highlights. In this quarter, revenues for the quarter improved by 3% year on year to rupees 656 crores. Our finished goods volume grew by 8% year on year at 41,529 metric ton. We delivered a healthy operating performance with EBITDA at rupees 94 crores for the quarter, resulting to margin of 14.3% for the quarter. ANP spend increased by 7% over the previous fiscal period and is at rupees 15 crores. For the finance costs reduced by around 50% due to improvement in cost of short-term borrowing. Let me highlight the exceptional item for the quarter and first half. The legal matter between Prince Pipes, Ruby Mills Limited and Mindset Estates Private Limited has been amicably resolved and the corporate office situated at the Ruby Dadar Mumbai has now been registered in the name of the company. Based on the valuation report, the property was revalued and there is a net gain of rupees 17.93 crores towards the settlement which is included in exceptional item for the quarter and first half. It is important to note that despite the exceptional gain, margin performance has been healthy. We continue to judicially expand our channel finance program. We have made steady progress since the recourse has shifted to distributors and have increased the credit limits of our channel partners from 105 crores in quarter 1 FY24 to rupees 126 crores in second quarter of FY24. Commenting on the working capital for the quarter, our inventory is stable at 62 days while our creditors are at 59 days and debtor currently are at 63 days. We acknowledge that there is a large scope for improvement in the data days and we are continuously working towards the same. With this, we would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Mr. Rahul Agarwal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead, sir. 
Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, best wishes to one of you for his additional responsibility. Uh, so, the first question was attention of the trade. Uh, you obviously mentioned that October has been stabilized. We have some initial hiccups. Uh, any any thoughts on the second half outlook? Uh, any known positive or negative surprises that could lead to volatility into PVC, either the pricing or the demand piece? Uh, so if I understand the question, you're uh, trying to understand the demand outlook? Yes, and any any known positive or negatives which, which could lead to volatility in terms of performance. So I think you're on, uh, let me start from the raw material uh, on PVC. Uh, you know, I think we are well poised as an industry. I think uh, it's an extremely low cost uh, polymer today. And I think uh, at least for the next couple of quarters, we foresee a very low level of volatility, uh, both upwards and downwards. I think PVC will be extremely range bound, uh, which is going to create an extremely growth conducive environment because of affordability. And also more certainty in pricing will always help the channel. Uh, to avoid any heavy uh, destocking or restocking. Um, so I think it is going to be a more growth conducive environment with a more certainty and a better visibility of uh, uh, growth. And uh, as, as far as the end market is concerned, uh, you know, I think real estate is doing well, infrastructure is doing well. So there are positives on, on both sides and uh, from the medium to long term perspective as well, we are uh, you know, confident and, and uh, certain of the growth. Got it. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, one of the larger peers into pipes uh, is acquired a facility which ma makes OPVC pipes. Uh, what I understand is the margins are decent and the demand is looks like sustainable over the next three to five years given the drinking water problem in the country. Any thoughts on the product and your company's interest in doing this? Uh, so we have been evaluating this product. Um, it's a capital-intensive uh, uh, line to be in, um, and uh, you know there is no application apart from infrastructure. Uh, it's purely going to be an infrastructure and an institutional uh, sort of game, which traditionally we have stayed away from as an organization because of the credit cycles. But as the government's focus on infrastructure is improving, we have seen better. Um, credit cycles in the infrastructure and institutional business. Um, so we will we will keep exploring any new opportunities like OPVC. Uh, a couple of the new products that we have introduced within piping, uh, like PP, uh, low noise pipes, uh, as well as uh, polypropylene surface in its product. I think we have seen uh, very strong uh, acceptance for these new technologies. Of course, sales numbers do take time whenever you introduce such kind of technologies because you know, we are the first mover in these kind of products where we have to generate demand, do the concept selling. Um, but in this quarter itself, uh, for both the products, we have already um, received our first uh, project orders for um, uh, PP Low Noise as well as for Horaton, uh, which has already been installed. So now with our modern plumbing vertical, we will always be sort of um, on the lookout for these kind of technologies, uh, OPVC being one of them. Uh, but I would prefer to focus more on the uh, on, on products that have acceptance in uh, retail projects as well as infrastructure, um, rather than having products which are focused only on infrastructure and institution. Good. And last one, small question was: When can you expect to see Bathway financials uh, separately? Uh, from December quarter. Okay. Perfect. So wish you all a very happy festive season. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we a reminder to all the participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Devansh Nigotia from SIMPL. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi, this is Devansh Nigotia from Safe Enterprises. Also, if we, you know, uh, compare our volumes with the peers, it has been relatively tepid. And also the base quarter was a weak quarter for us. So uh, any thoughts if you can share why, uh, you know, the volume performance has not been very robust? Sure. Yeah, thank you, Devansh. I think it's an important question to uh, address. 
and we want to sort of answer this question with as much transparency as possible because uh, you know regardless of whether the performance is good or bad uh, i would like to uh, you know not shy away from the performance so uh, yes i uh, accept that the volume growth uh, in this quarter and past couple of quarters has not been um, at par with industry and at prince we have uh, we are used to industry leading growth um, what i can share is that um, there is no uh, you know one or two peculiar reasons uh, for this we continue to be um, focused on distribution uh, adding new products uh, investing in branding um, uh, focus on entering into the project segment um, so the fundamentals uh, do not change and we continue to focus on the fundamentals and our entire effort and mind share of the professional team as well as the family is on that um, i think uh, you know couple of places we feel that um a segment like hdp we have maybe been laggards uh, with investing in capacity uh, and those capacity investments have been made in the uh, september quarter uh, which would start reflecting in um the operational performance in terms of volumes from the march quarter specifically for hdp and there has been some uh, corrective actions that we have taken on pricing uh, where uh, we felt that the the largest uh, player has been more aggressive uh, in pricing in certain markets uh, so we have tried to close down those um, pricing gaps and uh, certain more corrections that we have done in the past um, couple of months as well um, so i am confident uh, from a medium term perspective that uh, you know we should be uh, if not industry leading at least in line with uh, peers in terms of volume growth uh and in case of uh, barter segment now that it has come in so what is the uh, uh, you know fixed cost uh, which will be there in the uh, pnl uh, in terms of expected losses that we are expecting so uh, the cost regarding to barter will be uh, primarily on two aspects one is the employee cost and the other the branding cost uh, which uh, will be incurring in a pnl uh, so uh, that these are the two costs which will set in pnl uh, uh so any expected loss uh, contribution we are expecting this year uh, or let's say for this quarter how much would have been the contribution so uh, right now uh, you can see that uh, around 3 to 4 crore is the branding cost in this quarter and around 1.5 crore is the Uh, employee cost uh, that is sitting in the pnl which you can factor uh, for for uh, pipes pipes and uh, bathware separately okay uh, and the revenues for bathware so revenues like i said for the earlier question we'll start uh, reporting from december quarter because in september quarter we had just started uh, a roll out uh, so it this the initial uh, sales that have gone so i think the in the next 3 months the focus will be on setting up distribution uh, and from uh, december quarter we would share the uh, segmental revenues uh, for bathware um, as well uh, so we would be targeting 8 crores of sales for bathware in the december quarter okay just last question uh, how much is uh, the contribution of infra pipes as a percentage of volume this quarter uh allow me to you know carl will get in touch with you after the call to share the specifics i will not have that option okay uh, thanks a lot thank you a reminder to all the participants if you wish to ask a question you may press star and 1 on your touch tone telephone we take the next question from the line of fitesh cheda from lucky investments managers please go ahead sir Yeah, hi Nir. Uh, I have a question, uh, slightly on the you know uh, slightly longer side. Uh, what's your opinion on these uh, composite pipes, which is basically polymer, aluminium polymer, or polymer steel polymer uh, as an option? Uh, where polymer, aluminium polymer has evolved in uh, has done some business in India. uh and can they be um, can they make pvc uh, you know eventually uh, a redundant uh, uh, pipe uh, eventually 
because it's quite unique that it's India where PVC based piping solutions are prominent, uh, but globally it's a different polymer and then there are these composite pipes. So globally, if you speak, uh, there is one is composite, which is uh, still not a very large market globally. There you have PPR, uh, which is mm. globally well accepted, uh, in which we are market leaders in India, and we are seeing an acceptance uh, of, of PPR growing apart from its usual base. Uh, it's still very mm. small. Um, but uh, yes, developers today are looking for options outside of uh, CPVC as well, um, mm. as they are trying to upgrade their homes. I think average Indian consumer today, uh, as disposable incomes increase, I think there is end user also is becoming more product conscious, more brand conscious for a product which is um, behind the wall. So I don't think mm -hmm. it's specifically about composite pipes or not. Uh, it's about um, what alternate or what next after CPVC, if that's the question. I think CPVC will continue to have the lion's share of the market even on a 5 to 10 year horizon um, because of the um, ease of application as well as the cost structure. Uh, however, you will see certain niche uh, polymers like PPR or composite pipes coming in, but I don't foresee it being more than 3 to 5% of the overall, uh, you know, CPVC market. Uh, so we will invest in those kind of products because that helps us build um, a, a very strong brand identity and a first more advantage. So the way we have done for PP um, low noise, where we are upgrading SWR drainage systems from PVC to PP. Similarly, we will upgrade water supply systems as well. But I don't foresee it to be a very large uh, volume or top line uh, driver. So you may mean to say that PPR plus composites will still, will just be five percent of the market eventually. Yeah. Best or case. or individually five five percent five percent TPR five percent composite. No, I think put together around five percent uh, is is what I see. And uh, does your existing infrastructure and machinery, which makes the CPVC pipes, can make the PPR pipe, or you need a completely different uh, manufacturing setup? It's completely different. It's a, completely different. It's, a, it's a completely different uh, setup, but. We have been in PPR for, uh, you know, multiple decades now. So we have capacity. We process, uh, you know, more than uh, four or 500 tons every month of PPR. And uh, we have been in this industry as market leaders since a couple of decades now. So we that is our capacity for pipes and fittings of PPR. Um, we possess and as and when the um, demand supply permits us, we will be uh, adding capacity as required. And any specific comment on PSP, where when you put steel in between the two layers of polymer, one, the pricing also becomes competitive because steel is 50, 60 rupees a kg versus polymer at 80 to 100. So you get the, you get the strength of a steel and a life of a polymer, uh, which can compete straighter with CPVC. Uh, any specific comments there or it's too early for you? It's, I mean, as a product, it's in a nascent stage, but as a market leader, it's very important for us to be ahead of the curve with these kind of technologies. So as far as cost structure is concerned, I think with composite pipes, um, the cost structure becomes, uh, you know, two to three times uh, per bathroom. Uh, and the builder, the way he looks at piping cost is on a per bathroom basis. So if you replace CPVC with composite, I think the cost per bathroom will not increase from a percentage point of view, but it will increase two to three times. Um, uh, so, I, 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 there is a market for it, but it's not going to become a commodity. Even in the long term, I see this as a niche, uh, where more applications would be in bungalows, villas, uh, maybe hotels, but your traditional high-rise buildings uh, will continue to be in PVC and CPVC. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and just one question, uh, I didn't get your answer. Why was your volume growth uh, relatively lower than the industry for the last two, three quarters now? Yeah, I, you know, like I said, the fundamentals don't change. Uh, we continue to be aggressive on distribution, branding, uh, entry into projects. So there's no one or two particular reasons. Uh, and uh, we don't want to shy away from the numbers. The numbers speak for themselves that... Uh, we have been lagging industry growth. Uh, there is no one or two reasons for it, uh, but uh, you know we are confident that uh, we will be back to 
industry leading growth or at least in line with peers. Uh, one of the corrective actions that we have taken is uh, investing in capacity in HDP, uh, where we feel that we have been lagger. So that will be uh, reflecting in our volumes from the fourth quarter. Um, and certain pricing actions uh, as well that we have uh, taken in the current quarter, uh, which should help us uh, you know, realign our growth uh, performance. If pricing action means you are uh, way off in terms of pricing either we your peers in terms of premium or discount premium to peers that that that's the thought or yeah we feel that in certain markets we have uh, you know as a premiumization drive that we undertook two or three years ago in certain markets um, maybe we have um, over premiumized so we are you know correcting that to to be aligned with our peers. So I don't want to put this all down to pricing. I think pricing is just one aspect, uh, but we need to be, uh, you know, sharper and more aggressive with this. And I'm confident that um, overall, apart from pricing, there's a lot of other factors apart from pricing that go into growth. Uh, this is not purely a commodity business. Uh, so, you know, I'm confident uh, that in the next couple of quarters, uh, our growth will come back to uh, industry leading growth. Okay. okay. Thank you very much and all the best to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hitarth Kaparia from ValueQuest Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, my first question is, how has the CPVC performance been so far? And uh, what percentage of volumes come from CPVC you now? Uh, so we uh, we share a revenue breakup, not a volume breakup. CPVC would be around 20 to 25 percent of uh, revenue. 20 to 25 percent, okay. Of revenue. Uh, and okay, of revenue. And uh, what is the outlook on the working capital deal as of now? So right now, uh, data is at 63 days, uh, and uh, we are. Uh, using uh, uh, channel finance uh, as a lever as well as a great quality we, have, uh, we are reviewing wherever possible. We are trying to bring it down to around 50s uh, in next two quarters and then uh, we see uh, further downside is possible and uh, by next year we see that mid 40s should be the sustainable time period. Mid 40s by next year, okay. And uh, uh, any guidance on margins? So uh, just to clarify, mid 40s is the guidance for oh, debtor days. days. Uh, inventory, yeah, yeah, I got that. inventory and creditors will be a function of your procurement uh, pattern. And you are seeing right now creditors reduce because we are uh, depending more on uh, local time, uh, which could be the uh, trend for the next couple of months. Uh, as far uh, as as local as in terms of your residence? Yeah. Local okay. players and Reliance and Kemplast, yeah. Okay, and uh, what is the, and is there any guidance from margin that you would like to give? I think we'll stick to 12 uh, to 14% on a long term basis. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants to request to use your handsets while asking a question. We take the next question from the line of Akash Shah from UTI Mutual Funds. Please go ahead, sir. Um, yeah. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, so I had uh, a few questions. One was uh, on uh, CPVC anti opening beauty so uh, coming uh, uh, so in FY in August or September. Hello. Please go ahead. Yeah, in August or September, uh, the anti-dumping uh, uh, duty will get over. So, I mean, any thoughts whether it will get renewed uh, or uh, uh, it may not come up for renewal? I think uh, it's tough to comment on, uh, you know, these kind of things where uh, the government is the decision maker. But I think with, um, as... Uh, there's two parts to it. As local capacities increase, um, definitely there's a better case for protecting the local capacities, the domestic manufacturers. 
and we are seeing domestic manufacturers increase capacity uh, as well as our partner Lucrisol is putting up uh, capacity in uh, Gujarat. Uh, so as the capacity is locally increased, I think that builds an even stronger case for anti-dumping duty. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, the, the lower cost of CPVC, um, the lower the cost, the better the growth. Um, so, you know, it's we can't really speculate on what will happen with the government, but um, if capacities increase, I think the case for duties will be even stronger. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, then uh, just uh, coming to agri, non-agri mix, uh, any, uh, if you if you can share what was the uh, mix in this quarter and how was the growth on a YOY basis? So, you know, we'll, uh, I'll, I don't want to give too much on segmental growth uh, because of competitive intensity, but what I can say is Q2 is usually not very heavy on agri. Um, agri typically, you know, the agri season uh, is, is uh, more is, is stronger in the March quarter as well as the June quarter. Uh, typically, the September and December quarters are not as strong in agri because, as you know, agri is a seasonal business uh, versus plumbing and uh, SWR, which is more of a perennial uh, uniform business. Uh, so, most of the, the growth has been driven by the building material segment in the September quarter. Uh, sure. Uh, coming to uh, industrial pipes, uh, so we had uh, uh, we had tie up with uh, Lubrizol and, hello? Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So, we had tie up with uh, Lubrizol uh, uh, and... Uh, we had launched uh, uh, indust uh, pipes for industrial application using Corsan technology. So, any thoughts, uh, or I mean, an anything that you can share on this front? I mean, how are we doing? Uh, yeah. Currently, uh, yeah, so this is a segment which excites us uh, because of the lower competitive intensity, um, higher barriers to entry uh, in terms of access to technology and, uh, uh, you know, investing capital for a specific niche purpose. Uh, so, you know, today we see ourselves as someone who replaces conventional products like MS and RCC. And the way we have been able to create value in TWC, similarly we want to do that with uh, industrial CPVC as well. Uh, currently we are in the concept selling stage. So, uh, you know, these kind of uh, orders take an even higher gestation period than plumbing. Um, because a lot of concept selling has to be done. And when you have to replace metal with plastic, uh, in India, unfortunately, that uh, mental perception is still very high. So I think next couple of quarters, at least, we have to still invest into interacting with stakeholders, creating awareness um, about these kind of products, and uh, then working on specifications, and then generating sales. So it's a long process, uh, but we enjoy that process. Uh, because eventually then that gives us a very strong first mover advantage and brand equity. And we have seen that entire cycle play out with DWC, where the first couple of years, you know, we were work virtually working at, um, you know, very low capacity utilization. Um, but we focused on concept selling, we focused on nurturing the market. And now, you know, DWC has become a well, very well accepted product and Prince today is recognized as uh, a market leader in this space. So similarly, we are wanting to play out that process for uh, industrial CPVC. And the important thing is that this will not end at industrial CPVC. We will keep looking for newer opportunities, newer products. We are not in a hurry. Uh, you know, depth is more important than breadth. And whichever product we take, we will really um, give it a lot of mind share and time and efforts and investment in terms of people as well as branding, as well as capacity. Um, sure. Uh, sir, if you can share what what is the investment that we have done in uh, in this segment? I mean, have we uh, invested in capacity? Yeah, we have invested 8 to 10 crores. Okay, sure. And uh, over long term, uh, this uh, uh, segment would remain a niche or uh, do you feel that uh, this may contribute to a, a larger percentage of the top line? So globally, this is very well accepted and has become more than just a niche, but these cycles take very long. It's not a question of two to three years. It's a question of five to seven years before this becomes more than just a niche. But at least in the next three to five years, uh, 
you know, we, we see a good level of concept selling that we can do. Sure. And just last question, uh, new applications of uh, Plastic Pipe. So just wanted to check uh, how are we doing on, uh, let's say, fire uh, 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 related, uh, I mean, the, the pipes uh, which are fire retardant. So so any, uh, or uh, let's say any other new application that you would like to highlight uh, with respect to Plastic Pipes. Yeah. So specifically, uh, you know, we have entered into the uh, low noise uh, drainage and sewage systems uh, with polypropylene, which is uh, noise cancelling, uh, which uh, you know also has better impact resistance compared to PVC. And we have tied up with Austin Dock, which is a, a global market leader for polypropylene drainage uh, from Germany. Um, and similarly, for surface drainage, we have uh, partnered with uh, Horaton. Um, for surface drainage products where we will replace RCC surface drainage to PP surface drainage. These products are also made of 100% recycled polypropylene. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are seeing today builders becoming more and more green conscious and looking out for these kind of products. So with these kind of products, you know, uh, revenue is not the only metric that we need to see. Uh, we need to see the kind of brand equity that it helps us create. A uh, first more advantage. Uh, something unique that we are able to offer to the end user that our peers are not. Um, and we need to, and, and in the long term, the gross margins are really exciting when we will start uh, in-house manufacturing uh, for both these products the way we have started in-house manufacturing for industrial CQVC as well. Um, so in the long term, uh, a lot of value can be created, uh, especially at the gross margin level. And this will somewhere, you know, help us become more competitive in our core products as well, um, so that we can that diversification within piping also helps us become more competitive in our core segments. Sure, thank you very much, and all the best. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Arun Bed from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi Neha. You mentioned that uh, you know going forward we would at least be industry standard kind of growth. So a lot of our peers are talking of at least 15% CAGR growth for the next two three years. Are we trying to say that we we'll match that number? If not, more? So I think uh, we have to look forward. H1, of course, at least Q1 was majorly disrupted by ERP. Um, so whatever I'm talking about is from December quarter onwards. Uh, we need to be in line with uh, peers. So I'm, I want to be as transparent as possible and take this question head on. That yes, the, the volume growth has not been in line um, with uh, peers in uh, not only past quarter but past couple of quarters. Uh, certain corrective actions that we have taken, which we have shared in the earlier answers. Um, and, you know, now the numbers need to talk rather than us guiding for any kind of growth. I think the, the actions have to speak louder than words. And uh, we are used to that internally as an organization in terms of uh, having the highest growth in the industry. So rather than, uh, you know, us talking, I think the numbers have to start talking, and we are confident that that is going to happen. And just one thing, last quarter we had some issue with regards to fitting sales. Is that sorted out? Yeah, that is normalized in the September quarter, and that's reflected in our uh, numbers. Numbers. Thanks for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, Please limit your question to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Sneha Talreja from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity and congrats on uh, good margin improvement. So just starting with the first question itself, while you've answered the market share loss related uh, question, just wanted to understand where is this uh, margin growth coming from? Uh, yeah, one is our pipe fitting to not play. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, requested to go on mute. I think there's something. 
Um, so the question was on the margin performance. So uh, one is pipe fitting ratios normalized from the first quarter onwards, uh, which led to a normalization in margins. Um, uh, second, there was a inventory gain, but which was not material. It was um, less than five crores of uh, inventory gain. But mainly, it's the normalization of uh, pipe fitting ratio, as well as the product mix in uh, Q2 is always going to be higher uh, from the building material uh, segment. But overall, I will still stick to my guidance of uh, 12 to 14 percent uh, operating margin is uh, sustainable in the long term. But given that now your volumes in Q3 and Q4 are going to be even better, uh, don't you think with operating leverage coming in, this is really a conservative guidance? Yeah, but uh, like I also said earlier in the call, that we have taken some pricing, um, you know, action as well in certain segments. Uh, so whether that, you know, whether the operating leverage fully offsets that or partly offsets that is something to be seen. So I would much rather, rather have 12 to 14 percent operating margin and, uh, you know, growth which is leading in the industry. Um, so that's what the... Understood. Sorry to interrupt, Ms. Neha. Are you on a headset, ma'am? Yes, I am. May I request to please switch to your handset? This is better? Yes, please. Yeah. Second, we just wanted to understand from you, Neha, where are we in terms of our HDP at this point of time? What's the contribution from there and what's the outlook like? Are you now focusing more on that particular segment or you would still want to stay away given it's a low margin business uh, and higher working capital requirements? So one is uh, we will participate in uh, HDP only if the working capital is uh, similar because it doesn't make sense to stretch our balance sheet while we are uh, tightening our balance sheet uh, on, on the core portfolio. But we do see the value in participating in HDP. Uh, I don't mind if the margins are lower, but the, the uh, credit cycles should be tight, which we are seeing as the government is increasing focus on infrastructure. I think more of these programs are more um, funded and well capitalized. So there are certain investments that we have made in HDP. Uh, this has been one of the reasons that we have lagged industry growth. Uh, one of the reasons, not the only reason. Um, and we, that investment has been done in the September quarter. And this will start reflecting in the uh, volume performance from the March quarter, specifically from HDP. So where are we? So today, currently, we would be hardly anything in this particular uh, scheme of things as a percentage of our overall volume or revenue. Yeah, it would be less than 3% in terms of volume. And with this new capacity coming up, what's the vision? Where, where does this go? Uh, this should be uh, closer to 7 to 8%. Understood. And lastly... Uh, in case you can just let us know what is the reason for working capital increase in this point. Yeah, I have your view cut out. So I think the question was on, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. So I think the question was on the working capital increase. So majorly, uh, you know, the payable has reduced because uh, sourcing has been more focused on domestic. Uh, where it, it works on uh, advance payment or a cash and carry payment, uh, which has led to a, a pressure on the payables. And this may continue for the next couple of months. And I think on the debtor side, Anand has already guided on our short term and uh, medium term goals for debtor days. the line for the current question is Neha is disconnected. We take the next question from the line of Achal Lohade from JM Financial. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, good morning, team. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, my question is, uh, you know, sorry, I joined the call a little late. If it is uh, answered, if you could uh, repeat once again. You know, in terms of the, um, uh, of, you know, the, the capacities where we are, where competition is adding, you know, do you see uh, an issue with the, uh, uh, you know, with respect to the geographical capacity footprint, uh, you know, uh, creating a disadvantage? Third, 
and what kind of uh, digital could that be you know with respect to the brain part of it for years uh, we have added capacity in jaipur which has served catered to the north and west uh, and uh, telangana in 21 which has served uh, catered to south uh, and partly to the southeast uh, markets like chatisgarh and odisha as well uh, so we feel that the manufacturing footprint is um, actually has strength and with our next greenfield project coming up in uh, bihar uh, which will cater to the entire eastern market so with a kind of capacity addition uh, we have done not only in terms of numbers but also in terms of the strategic location i think we are well positioned uh, for the future um, and we will be uh, you know adding capacities aggressively in bihar after the first phase as well and you know i can say on a long term vision 5 years from today uh, bihar will be one of the largest uh, manufacturing facilities uh, for the organization so that's how we see it basically near if i uh, understand correctly um there is no disadvantage uh, you know uh, you see uh, with respect to our uh, manufacturing locations with a real competition have i understood right correct okay the second question i had was with respect to the cpvc segment you know we understand that the cpvc prices have kind of pulled off Uh, also in the field has that been the case with us as well or is there uh, and and with respect to second the disadvantage uh, what we had in terms of the cost uh, we had that uh, has that uh, gone away completely or is it still there uh achal can you repeat your question there was some disturbance sorry to interrupt you sir uh, achal sir are you on a headset i uh, if you are on a headset i would request it switch to your handset sir Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this better, ma'am? Is this better? Yes, please go. Okay. So uh, the question is pertaining to CPVC segment. Uh, you know, a uh, we see we see that CPVC uh, resin prices have uh, come off uh, in last uh, few months. Uh, is that the case with us uh, for our source? And B, uh, earlier we had some disadvantage with respect to uh, the cost uh, CPVC sourcing cost. Uh, is has that normalized or is there a still gap? between us and the peers in terms of the sourcing cost so costs have come down uh, as pvc costs came down uh, aggressively cpvc was bound to come down because cpvc is a derivative of pvc at the end of the day uh, as a result of which you have seen some restock a uh, destocking in the channel uh, for cpvc um, as well uh to answer the second part of your question uh, no i don't think there is a further disadvantage uh the kind of uh, premium that we are paying to lobrizol uh is similar so of course the base changes but the delta relative to the market uh, continues to stay the same thanks so okay. i'll come back in the queue for follow up thank you thank you thank you sir The next question is from the line of Udit Gajiwala from Yes Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, I sir, major questions have been answered. So just on volume front, if you can give any specific number, what kind of uh, growth are you looking for 24? Uh, maybe the specific year and of course medium term, do you stick to that you know 14-15 percent gap that that you have already mentioned? But anything specifically for this year? Yeah, so I think. Uh... like i said earlier on in the call uh, we do recognize and we want to be fully transparent and acknowledge that the volume growth has not been um, where it should be uh, relative to the peers uh, we are used to industry leading growth um, there have been certain corrective actions taken on pricing uh, as well as certain investments uh, in uh, hdp uh so you know i want to stay away from sort of guidances at this point i think the action should speak louder than words and we are confident uh that growth uh, will be there and it will be uh in line with the industry uh certain corrective actions have been taken and uh, we are hungry and we are confident uh, and we are putting up capacities aggressively with that belief 
understood understood and so lastly uh, on your ebitda per kg or the margin like you guide so uh, with the price corrective actions that you have mentioned do you see that these margins could suppress for next uh, say couple of quarters or one quarter or so because your raising prices have also come down sharply in this uh, quarter yeah so i think uh, lo- rather than talking quarter on see quarter on quarter could always go up and down in basis Uh, raw material prices, but I will stick to uh, long-term guidance of 12 to 14 percent. I am confident, uh, which includes the investments in bathware and the kind of corrective action we are taking uh, in pricing. Hopefully, the the operating leverage from the growth and the cost absorption uh, should at least partially offset the pricing action. It will take a couple of quarters. It will not happen overnight, uh, but I will stick to long-term guidance of 12 to 14. So, and lastly, on your bathware business, can you give any number in terms of what kind of dealers are we looking to end uh, this fiscal act, and what are the plans for next two three years? What number do you want to look at? Uh, so, you know, this has been just the first quarter of launch, uh, and our focus right now is on distributors. I think number of distributors again is not as important. The same philosophy that we use for pipe is the markets that we are able to do and the quality distributors. Uh, so you will have to give me a couple of quarter, at least one quarter before we quantify target number of dealers. But our target for December quarter for Bathware is eight crores of sales. Understood. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Ravi from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Sir Rajesh, line is in yeah, the top. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, first question pertains to your capacity breakup, which you share. This quarter, there has been major raises in the capacities. Uh, any specific reason? Uh, your actual uh, actual fittings capacity number has been scaled down, and you know, uh, similarly, there is a sharp increase in the Haridwar capacity. Uh, could you explain what is uh, changes? Even Tamil Nadu capacity has been down by 20 percent. So, uh, Ravi, the overall uh, capacity uh, right now is around 3.28. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, Chennai has uh, gone down because of uh, uh, we have not uh, replaced the NPA machine over there because we have uh, uh, in the in the region we have Sangareddy. so for that reason the np has gone down uh, we have not replaced that that's for chennai uh, so haridwar uh, has uh, added uh, uh, some capacity so in net net there is only 5 to 6000 kt uh, which has been added in the quarter uh, mm-hmm. yeah so uh, that's how the split is uh, but yes you are right in some of the plants the capacity has increased and some of the plants capacity has gone down uh basis a uh, requirement of uh, uh, of the organization okay and second question but cpvc uh, you mentioned that the 25% of your revenue is from cpvc thank you correct we take the next question from the line of jenis karia from antic stock broking please go ahead Uh, yes, thank you for the opportunity. So my question is on the capex guidance. Last quarter we are guided for a hundred crore capex for FY24. In first half, I see we have already spent eighty five crore. So is there any revision in capex guidance? Ah, uh, so in the first half, uh, uh, capex so there are uh, two normal items which are not uh, the regular ones, which needs to be excluded while. Uh, reviewing the overall capex for the uh, uh, plant uh, plants uh, that is one is the ruby uh, number uh, which needs to be excluded and the other is the bihar which needs to be separately tracked uh, so 7 to 8 crores is bihar right now uh, which will uh, scale up in coming quarters uh, so that's how you have to exclude these two things uh, for normalized uh, spend on uh, Normal plant and op- plant operations. So, if you can please quantify these two exceptional spends and how should we look at the full year capex so, number? Yeah, right now we are at fifty, fifty uh, uh, for normal, uh, which we are guided for eighty to hundred. 
Okay, and Bihar plan total capex will be over the next two years, uh, 24 and 25. So uh, it will be around 150 crores, uh, and phase two is also also lined up, uh, which uh, which will come subsequent to phase one. Uh, we are just evaluating how to go forward with it. But right now, 150 crores is something which we are uh, going ahead with. And that's why, sir, if you can the utilization on total level and Tirangana facility. So utilization at current level is around 50 percent, uh, and Telangana uh, would be around 40 percent of capacity utilization. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you, Nandan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. A couple of questions. Uh, first, Nihar, basically, just wanted to have your thoughts on the attention policy from the top management. Uh, we had a slew of episodes at the top recently. Any learnings from that and uh, any retention policy? That's the first question. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think uh, there's no specific retention policy as such, uh, uh, which is over and above the, the regular uh, policies. Uh, as we mentioned in the earlier remarks, uh, Anand, who has been deputy CFO with us for some time, um, now is uh, upgraded to the CFO position um, and the new CHRO also has joined. And we believe now that with these uh, changes in the leadership, we are uh, better geared for the future, uh, for the kind of vision uh, that we have to take the organization, uh, not only in terms of market and growth, but also in terms of organizational identity. Um, so that's where we are. So will we be looking for some ease of policy, anything on the retention side, or will continue status quo? So we have we already had an ease of policy in place a few years ago. Uh, as of now, uh, that's the status quo. Okay. Uh, my second question was more on the operational side. Uh, if you look at the realization per kg, uh, what we see for Prince Pipes, uh, it has the least reduction on a year-on-year -year basis at 4%. Uh, versus the larger peers, when well, the reduction is pretty sharp, which is at which is at eight percent and ten percent. We just wanted to understand. Uh, we have done pretty well uh, on the price decline as compared to the peers. Uh, can you give some flavor on the product mix? Was it less government sales, uh, less HDP, uh, or there was a contribution from bathware? How should we understand it? I think bathware got the contribution. It's too early to to put that in here. Uh, but you're right. Uh, I think this is not majorly a function only of price. It's also a function of product mix. Uh, for us, uh, Q2, uh, you know, is is not very heavy in agri. Uh, also, we like I said, we have been laggards in the HDP space, uh, which is a low realization product, which. Uh, will eventually get, drag down the margins at the organizational level. Today, it's not a very relevant capacity. In terms of volumes, it's maybe only 3-4%. Um, so this will scale up from March quarter. And also, there has been some pricing action that we have taken in uh, the core segments of PVC, CPVC, uh, which should hopefully help us uh, realign our uh, volume growth. Possibly to give some color on the mix, uh, was CPVC higher or was picking substantially higher on a year-on-year -year basis? Uh, just trying to understand the operating metric. So fittings was fittings normalized uh, from quarter two onwards. Uh, in quarter one, we did have some challenges for the fitting dispatches, which impacted our product mix. Uh, so in quarter two, um, a pipe fitting ratio normalized, and overall building material also had a better contribution relative to uh, irrigation. Sure. And this stick to my long term uh, uh, margin guidance of uh, 12 to 14 percent on a long term uh, is attainable uh, on a long term basis. Sure. And this last question, uh, I think uh, there, the other Cheddar family uh, also uses the brand Prince. Uh, I understand they are coming up with sizable capacities and which is due for commissioning. Uh, so is the uh, the brand logo, are the rights with uh, uh, the company or how should we look at it in the marketplace? Because there could be some scope of confusion between the two uh, logos. So what's, what's the roadmap to actually address this? Uh, that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Yeah, the logo is completely different, uh, and it has been like that for many years, and that completely is with the company, uh, with Prince Pipes, uh, the differentiated logo and name. And I think now the, the gap is too big, and uh, that activity is very volatile. In certain quarters it's there, in certain quarters it's not there. So I think the gap has become too big, and now the market appreciates the range, the quality, um, the newer products. Uh, so today Prince Pipes has a very strong brand identity, uh, which was, uh, it's a very different scenario than what it was five years ago. Sure. This is helpful. Thank you so much. Wish you all the very best. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Keshav Lahoti from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead, sir. I thank you for the opportunity. Since all you spoke about, you know, you are seeking some sort of price correction. Can you give some sense? Is it all across market? Is it specific to some market? What sort of correction you have taken? So some of the corrections we have taken, some we are you know about to take. Uh, this is in certain markets, uh, not Pan India. Wherever we feel that uh, we need to be more competitive uh, in certain markets in certain categories, this pricing action has been taken. Understood. At company level, the impact would be one or two percent. So I will stick to my long-term guidance of 12 to 14 percent of operating margin uh, on an annual basis uh, is achievable. Of course, for the current year, it will be X of Q1 because of the challenges in the first quarter. But on a even for the next couple of years, I think 12 to 14 percent um, annual EBITDA margin are sustainable, including the. Uh, pricing action because with that there will also be volume growth and uh, resultant operating leverage uh, benefits which could partially offset this at the EBITDA level. Understood. Uh, you said that your domestic sourcing has increased. My understanding was earlier you were taking 40% from domestic. So whether that mix is going to change on permanent basis? Yeah, so this happens annually. The long term contract, the annual contract that we have to do with. Uh, Reliance and Kemplast. So at the beginning of this year, uh, we had increased our uh, domestic contracts uh, on an annual basis. Uh, so that will be uh, permanent. It was maybe not reflected in Q1 because we were not normalized as an organization, but that's reflected from Q2 because we have increased our volume offtake as we, uh, you know, grow and as the overall environment becomes more uncertain. I think it's always prudent for us to increase local uh, and domestic uh, offtake. So we will continue to import and will continue to be a, a, a sizable share. But given the, the, the way we are growing, I think uh, it, we, we decided at the beginning of the financial year itself that we would be increasing our domestic volumes. And even the local players were keen to work with us, seeing that we are uh, the way we are growing across geographies. Okay. So is it the proper understanding now your raw material sourcing would be 50% domestic and 50% imported? For pipes, for uh, PVC pipes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one last question. Uh, East uh, capex of 150 crore, how will that be split? Uh, so it will be... Uh, you can take 60 to 70 crores uh, in this year, and balance will be in the FY25. Okay, got it. So this year total capex will be 150 to 160 crores. Including BR, yes. Including East. 150, 160 crores including East this year capex, right? Yes. yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you, sir. A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Nikit Agarwal from VT Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, Rahul, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question was on the grass implant that is coming up. Uh, will they be supplying only to you and Ashirwal, or will they be supplying to other players as well? The CPVC compounds. So historically, if you see Ashurvad has, I mean, Lubrizol has always had uh, two licenses, and as long as we are growing and we are able to uh, fulfill our uh, volume offtake, which we are, 
um, I don't see the need. And historically, if you see, they have always uh, maintained uh, two licenses uh, because opening up the market may not, uh, you know, it may end up diluting the Flowguard brand. Uh, so we believe that uh, it will still be a, a two licensee approach. Okay, so so won't that like really put you on an ad advantage compared to the other players? Absolutely, and this was one of our uh, incentives to to sign with Lubrizol when they had approached us few years ago. There have been some delays, unfortunately, uh, but uh, we still believe that once the plant is operational, we will be uh, on a on a strong footing because local uh, capacity, local cost structure with the Flowguard brand. Uh, will put us in a dominant position, especially for CP. All right, and that the plant is expected to commence from uh, 2025, right? If I'm not wrong. Correct. All right, and uh, so any reason why your employee benefit expenses have increased during the quarter? So it's a uh, it's a normal increment which has happened in the increment cycle. That is one and. And and uh, the provisioning uh, uh, of director's commission is also there, which was not uh, there last year because of the subdued performance. Uh, so that's the two reason you will find the difference. Okay, so so do we expect this kind of run employee expenses going forward as well, or any reduction? It's a normal uh, increment cycle which has happened and affected in the cost of the employees. Right. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. Got, got it, sir. That, that's it from me. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Akash Shah from UTI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Um. Yeah. Hi. Thank you very much for the follow-up opportunity. I just had one question. So after uh, taking the pricing action, if you can share how much uh, will our products uh, be at a premium or discount to industry leaders? Uh, it will be at a parity uh, to the industry leader. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, it would be for both C PVC and CPUC, right? So in CPVC, there would be a slight discount to the industry leader in CPVC. Um, and in PVC, it would be at a parity. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next question from the line of Mr. Rajesh Ravi from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. On this uh, all new plant coming up, you mentioned that you and Ashirwad would uh, be selling most of, almost all of the, you know, CPVC from that uh, factory. So, if I look at your current volume, should be close to, you know, just ballpark one uh, one like sixty thousand volumes in FY23, uh, assuming ten twelve percent. Of that would be coming in from CPVC, so it's around 15, 16,000 uh, tons of volumes. And this plant would be how much? One lakh ton something? Uh, first phase is 48,000. 48,000. So, uh, are you saying that you'll have, even if you get 30, 40 percent of that uh, incremental volumes, uh, you see your CPVC portfolio significantly increasing over the next three years? Yeah, it has to. It has to uh, grow aggressively. And mm -hmm. Okay. And do you see any risk to uh, with the CPVC your uh, lubrizol capacity, uh, make money capacity, and uh, you know, CW all uh, venturing into CPVC manufacturing domestic domestically, and more, these two players applying to uh, even, even many other smaller players. The CPVC, the high margin with the CPVC market is enjoying. That may come under pressure. No, I think it's great news that there is local capacity coming in uh, mm -hmm. that will lead to growth of CPVC because we are today 95% dependent on import uh, as CPVC industry and that is not sustainable if the CPVC industry has to grow the way PVC did over the past uh, three, mm -hmm. four decades. Uh, CPVC needs to have local capacity. Only then will become only then will CPVC become affordable, and only then CPVC will grow. Um, so, you know, unless there is growth, there is no point of, uh, you know, having very high margin. So, um, uh, and, you know, CP CPVC is a very different industry. It's much more brand conscious at the front end, where top four of us are controlling 70, 80% of the market. Uh, so, I don't see that changing sub substantially. 
while having local capacity will really open up the acceptability of CPVC and growth of CPVC. So I see this as a major positive. Correct. So, but you don't see that the margins, which is 2x currently of normal CP, uh, PVC margin, uh, with more supply coming in uh, of the CPVC market growing at a faster pace, uh, you don't see a risk to uh, the margin profile uh, coming off significantly. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is it will be more than offset by the growth. The growth will more than offset that, uh, which right. is why we should see this as a net net positive. Correct. At industry level, this will be, uh, you know, overall strong volume with a slightly lower margin, but overall the margin should narrow compared to where they are currently. Is this understanding correct? Over the long term, a lot of this. Yeah, over the long term, term, obviously, next three to four years. Yeah. Okay. Great, sir. That's all from my end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yep, thank you everyone for joining the call. Thank you. On behalf of Equity Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.